Hello, uh, I just wanted to give you a quick demo on how I'm doing my uh, 3D printing lately. Uh, so first off, uh, here is a character that I built in ZBrush, and I'm recording this on Camtasia. And uh, Camtasia is a program where you can record your desktop with your voice and make these little tutorials. Uh, fortunately, it does slow down ZBrush a little bit, but it's all good. Um, so yeah, here's my character. It's a little complicated, but what I tried to do is uh, do my best to dynamesh and blend in these areas so there aren't any weird gaps in here. You know, it's all pretty much meshed fairly well. We'll see. It's printing right now. Um, and uh, I tried to use the maximum size build I could with the Form 1 3D printer. Let me scale this back down. So once I have the character built uh, and dynameshed, it's ready to be 3D printed. Um, what I decided to do, since this is my uh, you know, first handful of 3D prints, is just to do it solid. Costs a little bit more, takes a little bit more time, significantly more time to print, but there's less um, risk of something going wrong rather than uh, using a hollow print. So once your uh, Z tool is done, you go to Z plugin, 3D printer export, and I've been printing these. I actually picked, uh, let's do it right now, 5.5 uh, as the size. Clicked STL. All right, and that allows me to export it as an STL file. Let's write test. And it doesn't take too long to export. We can quit out of ZBrush. Quit. And then here is an example of what this character looked like once was brought in. And to do the supports, you're going to go to, you'll see a little section right here. You can see the character very clearly with these lines, which symbolize the supports. So what I decided to do was um, have the character on its back so that all the supports would be in the back. And when I pull them off, uh, I'm going to do the cleanup in those areas. So it shouldn't be too bad. I also made the fingers kind of like webbed fingers, so there's no space in between the fingers. I didn't want to deal with those tiny little fingers because I'm thinking of trying to mold this later on. Uh, so I was also thinking about that a little bit is uh, molding. How can I mold this? How can I make multiple copies of this? So once that's done, uh, you're kind of good to go. It says the volume is about 110 milliliters. That's that's quite a bit um, for the printer. I think the the capacity is 120, so I'm right at the edge. And then once you have this done, you're gonna take your USB drive, hook that up to the Form 1 3D printer, and then press this little orange button right here, and it'll start uploading your character. This character took about maybe 40 minutes to upload, so estimate that time as well and also when you're getting ready to do your 3d print uh, beforehand you want to shake the resin shake up the resin container uh, and then let it sit for about an hour beforehand so that all the air bubbles have time to go away so when you pour the resin in you know everything is good to go you're ready to press print so I press print and this took about 11 hours to print and I'm on the 11th hour now. So we'll see how it goes. I tried to do something slightly more complicated just to see what problems would occur, if any, and how the 3D printer and myself are handling this complicated imagery. So anyway, the next step would be to go to the 3D printer. And uh, yeah, here is a print I'm working on right now. This is my third print from my brand new uh, Form 1 3D printer. And you can see the character is being built up right now. We've only got about uh, 25 minutes left to see how it comes out. It's funny when you first look at it, you're like, oh my God, there's no detail. But um, what happens is it's covered with more resin, kind of like, it feels kind of slimy. And you have to take it out of the machine and clean it up. But uh, you can see the supports very clearly through our cool orange coloring here. 
here's how it looks on the other side. There we go. And now you can really see what it looks like inside. So we've got our spatula for getting it off the build plate. Um, if you have a little razor blade to put in there first and then get it out, that's a little better than try to wedge it in there. I just don't have a razor blade at the moment, unfortunately. But I will get one for the next job. I'm going to try not to get any resin on my hands because I'm going to need to touch my 3D printer over here. I don't want to get anything jacked up. So, first thing we're going to do is uh, take it off the machine. You click this little um, button, open, and gently, but firmly, make sure that you have your character or your build plate in hand so you don't drop it. Okay, and then I always forget this part, but close that. Okay, and then they have this handy dandy holding area right there, which is awesome. So there you go. Very cool. So what I'm going to do, make sure my hands are clean, close the machine. I don't want to get any dust in here or debris or, you know, if there's a fly or bug net going in there and getting into the resin that could cause trouble. Try to make a little bit less of a mess is I'm going to clean up some of the excess resin, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Alrighty, so here's the part where I wish I had the razor blade, but I don't have it at the moment. You want to kind of push in here and wedge it in there and snap it out, but you don't want to gouge in because you don't want to scratch the surface too much. In fact, hopefully you don't want to scratch it at all, but it's inevitable it's going to scratch it a little bit. I'm trying to get this rascal off of here. And that's it. So there's our 3D print, and you can, if you were here to feel it, you can feel it's kind of slimy, okay? But it looks great. So now it's my job to try to get it off without effing it up. Okay, so we got it there. Um, the next stage would be to clip these things off. And this, it feels, it looks like a little rubbery, but it's not. It's like glass, so when you cut these, little shards of plastic go flying all over the place. And there's shards of plastic covered in molten uh, resin. Not good for the eyes. So I'm going to try not to touch the character too much because she's still a little bit delicate. But you still have to get her off of here. So the best thing to do is to shatter this material first, as you can see. Shatter that material just by cutting it. You see, it just, it just right, it already cracked. All right, there we go. She's still fine on the other side. So then you can start pulling these, these supports off fairly easily. So once your uh, supports are all pulled off and cleaned, it's ready for the wash bath. So we're gonna take this, move it into here, drop that in there, and then they have these little supports, and you can just lift it up back and forth like that and wash it out. So you wanna leave this character in here for about, uh, I'd say about 10 minutes. You don't want this, um, part of the machine to be put back and have a dripping resin because who knows where that resin is going to drip and if it drips uh, into your machine it's, it's tricky to get out it's really tricky to get out okay. and what you can do is if you pick up the character uh, Gently, you can feel this, I guess I call it sliminess, but you can feel that going away. And I actually rushed through a character yesterday. I took it out a little early, and it was already letting it dry, and I realized some of the that goo was on there, and it was drying to my character. 
So I just put it back in the wash bath and, and kind of just washed it off. It worked out fine. It wasn't a big deal. This stuff is actually fairly resilient. Once it's done, it's difficult to ruin it, you know. Okay, so that feels fairly well. Now what I, what I can do is I can put it in the wash bath here, water, and that instantly kind of freezes the alcohol. And then you can really tell if it's clean or not. So now I can kind of look and see. It looks pretty good, I think. Um, I don't see any, <clears throat> any gooey areas that I can see. But I think, uh, I think it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with Pretty happy with the result. Um, it picked up pretty much all the detail that I could see from the uh, the ZBrush um, rendering.